Tom Groove. This Tom Groove. Probably the biggest musical cliche in contemporary worship music. Right up there with the 1564 chord progression. I've been in ministry now probably close to 20 years, maybe. Anywhere somewhere between 15 and 20 years. And I tell you, man, I must have played this Tom Groove six, seven million times. And I got to be honest with you, man. In the nicest way possible, I've kind of grown to hate it. No disrespect. You know what I mean? I realize that in a lot of situations, it's just what works. But there's got to be something else. This can't be the only Tom Groove that works. Um, anyways, I eventually got to the point where I just had to start getting creative and thinking of other ways that I could sort of play the same kind of rhythm, not really disrupt what needed to happen without actually playing that Tom Groove. So I'm going to show you my particular approach to playing this. Um, this Tom thing, and um, just give you some ideas of different ways that you can sort of, you know, restructure it, you know what I mean, so that you're playing the same thing, but you're not really playing the same thing, and, um, you know, just to help you get a little bit more creative when you play this groove. All right, so the first thing that we need to understand about this groove is that there are really only two accents in this entire groove that really matter, all right? So if you approach it kind of from the ground level and just think about those two accents, then we can sort of play around those and play some, some different things around them. So those two accents are basically the and after two and the four. So if we're counting one and two and three and four, so the accents are one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. So the and of two and the four are the only two accents that matter. If those are the only two accents that you actually physically played, it would still work. So you could literally go boom, dum, go, dum, go, dum, dum, go, dum, go, dum, dum, go, dum, go. And it would still pretty much work in any situation at any tempo. But typically, you know, worship leaders love to hear Tom, so you have to give them a little bit more than just that. What we don't want to do is just limit ourselves to just dun, dun, gun, ka, dun, gun, dun, dun, gun, ka, dun, dun. There's other things that we can do to make it a little bit more interesting for ourselves, a little bit more musical, you know what I mean? And um, there, there there's a particular approach that we can take to playing this um, that'll be a little more interesting for us, but at the same time won't interfere or interrupt anything else that's happening. All right, so now that we know that we have these two accents that we need to work with, now we can start to build something interesting. So step number one, there's really only two steps to doing this. Step number one is the right hand. What you want to do is just ride the floor tom, just in eighth notes, with the right hand. It starts there, all right? So just one and two and three and four and one and two and three, like that kind of thing. Okay, so starts there. The next thing, that first accent that we have, which is the and of two, right? One and two and, right? You're going to play that with the left hand.
All right, so those are the two main steps to doing this. This is really all you have to do to start to make this thing um, a, little, uh, a little more interesting for you to play. Now, the third thing is a mental little exercise that you want to do while you're playing this, okay? And what you're going to do is while you're playing this, while you're riding the floor, Tom, and hitting that accent with, um, with the opposite hand, I want you to run a 16th note template inside your brain or inside your head while you're playing this. Okay? So if you're going one, two, three, and four, and two, and four, and one, and two, in your head, I want you to hear this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Okay? Three, four. One, two, three, four. So the 16th notes are sort of your rhythmic template in your brain while you're playing this. And then from there, all you really have to do is just occasionally introduce 16th notes. So you're going to bring those 16th notes that you're running in your head, you're just going to bring some of those out while you're playing this, using the left hand. And again, you're going to mix yourself, right? So you, you don't want to hammer out every single 16th. You want to play your accents with intent. You know what I mean? You want to play those dynamics with intent. So, so it flows a little bit better, right? So, you know, just control your volume while you're running those short sort of bursts of, uh, of 16ths. And you can play those anywhere you want, really, around um, the particular accents that we're playing. And, and this works at any tempo, slow, fast, whatever. But that's all you're going to do, man. You're just going to introduce 16th notes. This is how I do it, anyway. Um, and you're just going to introduce those 16th notes inside that groove, and you'll be surprised at how much better it actually feels to play. And that's it, man. That's all it is. And then from there, 
you know, depending on the situation, you can get as intense as you want. You can add more Tom stuff if you want. You can scale it back, you know what I mean, if you're playing nice and soft, if it's a worship situation. Um, you can do whatever you want, but that's the foundation, right? It starts with the floor tom. You know, hammer out those accents however they need to be. And then, um, and then you can just introduce those 16th notes anywhere you want. You know, I got some fun toms here to play with. I play with a, um, with a six-piece of church. So, you know, I got two floor toms that I can um, play around with. So, you know, I can really sort of get big with this or whatever I feel like doing with it. But that's my general approach to playing this particular tom groove so that it doesn't sound so cliche in my head. So there you go, man. Quick tip for all you worship drummers out there. You can try it. This weekend, we're approaching Easter weekend. So, you know, you can, uh, you can try this if you want in your church because um, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you there's at least two songs in your set list that's going to have this tom groove in it. Play around, experiment, you know what I mean? Think like a musician and don't be a timid worship drummer. Timid worship drummers are not effective, all right? So that's it, man. Have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you next video. Thank you.